Welcome back to Metal Gear RC. We're here in the Wrench Nut RC garage, and today we're going to be talking about the Hobby Wing 1080G2 performance. And as you can tell, Psycho here is upset that his favorite truck is broken. It's down hard. While on the trail, trying to get some footage of the 1080G2 performance on film oh my god i'm dating myself here i noticed trying to go over the log pay attention to the uh, front passenger wheel and i'm using the real car mode shifting into forward shift and reverse and trying to get over the log and all of a sudden snap as you can see, there was not very much weight on the front wheel. There was not much traction or friction to it. And as soon as it happened, I, I pretty much just cut the film thinking, what happened? Noticing that the tire was still rolling and everything else. There was no binding or uh, issues besides it's not pulling anymore. So I quickly brought it back to my vehicle. And if you follow me on Facebook, you've already seen that as soon as I pull the tire off and open it up, the drive shaft and the uh, front axle, it literally sheared right off. And I have to say, no fault to the 1080G2 at all i had all my settings all down i didn't have no high starting torque or anything like that so no fault to it i mean this truck's like three or four years old i put plenty of miles on it and it is a uh chinese knockoff uh, a clone of the tamiya bruiser and well it went and now i can't find any replacement parts for it and wherever I'm looking at to get the originals they're really expensive and I'm not looking to spend that much money on this truck to fix it but I do have my eyes on a couple of axles that I think is going to work on this truck but it's going to take some time and a lot of work to get it up and running uh, back on the trails again so i'm i'm taking everything and i'm pretty much putting it in a box and i'm gonna put it off the side i've been doing a little side hustle here and there and i've i've, I've uh, accumulated some extra cash and with the wife's blessing she's allowing me to get my early birthday gift and i have ordered a new truck i will be building it here on the channel so if you want to see that, go ahead and subscribe quickly so you don't forget that you can see when I post the video of the bill. I'm hoping it's going to be in in less than a week. Back to the Hobby Wing 1080 G2. Now, I did get to drive it around and test it out. And I have to say, it handled just like the first version 1080 performance everything while driving i was i had the real car mode as well as the drag brake enabled for the from the controller and while driving with the real brake mode i have to say the drag brake was more like a park brake i usually had it set on zero unless i had to take my hands off the controller to do something i would then hurt set the drag brake a little higher so it wouldn't roll. The truck wouldn't roll at all. But in the real car mode, I mean, if you need a brake, you could just quickly push your finger forward into the brake and now have to worry about it slamming into reverse. And you quickly do that, man, you got brake. So I would see that the hardcore scale guys would probably love that. But the downside to it is the fact that it takes a lot of time to shift from forward to reverse or reverse to forward. And you have to fully let off of the throttle or go into brake for it to switch 
as you've probably seen in the uh, previous video of me demonstrating it on this truck, is if you had the throttle down and you shift it in from forward to reverse, it's still going to go forward until you go into neutral or all the way into brake before the speed controller will actually switch it to where when you throttle again, it will go into reverse. So I definitely see a downside to the ones, uh, to y'all that love that quick snapping forward and reverse and or the other way around. If you like that quick snap back and forth, you're not going to like the real car mode. I would definitely suggest giving it, giving it a try. The real car mode, give it a try. You might find out you like it. But if you don't, just keep in mind that drag brake from the controller, I have to say that is going to be where you're going to enjoy this one at. Uh, having that uh, ability to control your drag brake. Now, when controlling the drag brake, I had a turn dial. I had a set to where it incremented by tens. I can vary it uh, easily. If you're out there and you have maybe a, uh, a two position switch or a three position switch, or if you're lucky, you have a uh, multi position switch, you might, especially with the multi position switch, you can kind of dial it in some. But the ones with the, the two position to three position, you will probably have to play around with your endpoints and your uh, center trim to find those selections you like while on the trail or crawling because from zero to a hundred percent it's definitely going to be better than just setting it and having to be stuck with whatever you set with on the trail i didn't like that because of the fact is i don't like it killing my battery while it's just sitting there on flat ground I wanted to be able to, to actually set it depending on the situation. And I like it. I'm actually starting to like the real car mode. And I might not even be using the, the drag brake. Like I said, it's more like a park brake if you're in the real car mode. Because in the real car mode, as soon as you push the brake and you push it all the way down, well, you're at 100% brake if you have it set up uh, through the programming card that way so i have to say there's no downside to the new 1080 g2 the only downside to it is if you do not have a controller with three or more channels you won't be able to use the real car mode or the real time drag brake settings. The only thing you'll probably benefit from is the new voltage regulator settings to where you can actually have 8.4 volts to your electronics like your servos. But if your car cannot take 8.4 volts, this then you might want to get the Hobbywing 1080 the first version. Uh, I know it's on sale right now. So if you got a, a two channel and you can't use all those and especially you're not able to use the 8.4 volts on your rig, yeah, you may want to go ahead with the, the first version. But if you have a three channel or more and you, will, you want to be able to real time set your drag brake, or you're a hardcore scale guy and you want that that function where yes you have to come to complete stop to switch from forward to reverse you're gonna love this ESC and yes that's my opinion but take it as it is so if you like my content please go ahead like and subscribe do it quickly before you forget also leave some comments Tell me how I did. What did I miss? What did you like? Or even if you just want to say hi, go ahead, leave me a comment. 
And as for now, thanks for watching.